Hey, are your doll trimming tools getting you down? Well, today I'm gonna to show you six different ways on how to sharpen your doll trimming tools. And we'll actually do four of the ways and we'll talk about two of the other ways. All right, so let's get to it. Let's sharpen and talk about sharpening our trimming tools. So if we look at our trimming tools, you will notice that they have a very interesting structure to them. Meaning that when we look at them, Right, they are what we call a single bevel tool. So this is one, a tool made by Dolan. And if you look closely, the tool only has one bevel here all the way around. It is flat on the inside, flat on the outside, and it has a bevel here and a bevel here. That means that basically all your tools are sharpened exactly in this same way. So let's look at another tool here like this one, right? So this is your basic trimming tool. You'll see flat on one side, flat on the inside, and then has a sharpened edge here and a sharpened edge here, right? And so these are what we call single bevel tools. So let's do a drawing of it just so we can understand what that means. So when we look at this, I'm going to do some drawing here on a piece of paper. So I'll bring this camera down closer so we can see it better. So when we look at the profile of this blade right here, what do we got? We have a top side, which will be that side. We have an inside surface, which would be this side here, right? And that inside surface would be longer. And then we have the beveled edge here and here, right? And ideally, this edge right here is the edge that we're really trimming with, that side and that side, right? And so as we use the tool, these little edges get duller and duller. So now let's think about that. So there's a what we would call a, a knife edge too, and that has a different sort of edge. So we look at this knife here, right? You can see it has a bevel on this side, woo, sharp. And it has a bevel on this side. So this has a double bevel or a bevel on both sides. So a knife edge, knife would be like this, right? Usually the blade, you, sometimes the blade gets thicker, right? As it goes out. And then what happens as it, as it gets to the sharp bits, right? It goes, and this has a, bevel on both sides, on both of the edges, right? So it just makes our trimming tools a little bit different than what we would call a traditional knife edge. There are some knives that have a single bevel like this one that only has a bevel on one side, right? So if you look at this one, this is my fettling knife, right? It has a bevel on this side, no bevel on this other side. So this edge is flat. So this knife is like this, comes up a little, has a bevel, and then kind of goes like that. So that's the way that knife will, might look, right? But most of the knives we have around the house are beveled on both sides. So this exact, uh, this utility blade, right? You can see it has a bevel on both sides. And generally that makes a really good cutting surface, but for durability, this makes this much thinner, right? So this, um, these edges are much thinner. So in general for heavy duty, like applications, these um, types of blades wear out faster where you're really grinding away on stuff. So that's why these single bevels are really good for things that are, require really beefy thing and for the type of tool that we needed to do in ceramics. So when these tools get used, right, what happens is, let's flip this paper over or let's just get a new paper out. So let's get, let's go really zoom in on what's happening when our tool starts to dull, what happens? Well, we have our beautiful sharp edge at the beginning, right? And as we use it on clay, some of this metal gets worn off, some of this metal gets worn off, some of this metal gets worn off. And instead of a nice super sharp thing, we have something that comes in and has a slightly dull point, right? Like that. So I really emphasize that a lot, right? And that will happen anywhere where we use the tool because the clay is really hard, right? We're grinding away, trimming away, cutting through basically little rocks, right? As we do this. So what are we gonna do? Well, when we sharpen our tools, there's a couple things you can do when you sharpen your tool, right? You could just bring this edge back down because we wanna restore it back to pointiness, right? So it has a nice sharp edge. So how do we do that? Well, there's a couple ways, but some ways are actually better than others. So let's talk about that. We could just take this dull edge and just remove some of this material like that remove that and then you see how we can get a point back but now we have like two bevels here we have the the original bevel that came came in right and then we put like this what we call like a micro bevel or a different angle on there but you can see that we can achieve a new sharp point 
hmm, that's pretty good, right? And you can wear that metal away really fast. So that's a really quick and like a dirty way to sharpen your thing. So what do I mean that? Why is that a dirty way? Well, because when we do that, so let's just do that here, right? So I have my blunted tip and then I did that secondary bevel like that to create that new tip. Well, you see how that is not as pointy as the old one. The old tip used to come out here, right down like that, and it made a much more pointier thing. So that had a like a little bit more sharpness to that. And I see I did an extreme, extreme example of making that pointy. But what's going to happen eventually, you can't just keep walking that tip back because what happens the next time you want to sharpen it and you want to sharpen it the same way, like eventually you're just going to end up trying to have to sharpen it straight down. So that's why it's not a great solution. If you want a super fast shortcut, you can just whack this end off, right? And create a new point. Sure, that works. But ideally, hopefully what you would want to do is here, this was my old tip, right? Like that of my tool. And let's say I wore off that much of it like that. So I have a rounded end. What you would love to do is restore the tool back to its original sharpness, its original profile. Right, so like this, like this. So maybe what we should do is just knock off all that metal right there, right? So we end up, just end up walking the tip back again. So let's just do it, let's just do it one more time so that you guys can see, right? So this is my whole trimming tool like this when it's brand new, right? And then I've worn off part of this tip, right? So it's gotten dull, right? It's gotten flat there. So we, what we would do then ideally is just wear all that metal away, right, right there. And then you see how I have restored it back to its original angle, original profile that it had when it came fresh out of the factory, right? When it's, that is really good, right? Cause those new trimming tools trim really good. So that's our goal when we sharpen our tools is to try to make it as good, if not better than it was before when we started. Right. So I will knock that edge back. Right. And that is the trick to sharpening, getting these tools to restore. So they trim like they were brand new because, man, those new tools trim really good. So let's look at some tools and what we would do. So remember that these tools only have a single bevel on them, right? A bevel on the outside, bevel on the outside, bevel on the inside. So let's talk about some of the ways that we would trim how and how we would trim these tools. Oh, I forgot to say, some of our tools will have an inside bevel. So these, these bevels are on the outside of the tool, but some of these tools that I have have bevels on the inside, like this Dolan tool is not really considered a trimming tool, but when I feel it, this whole edge right here is flat. So it doesn't have the bevel on the outside. This bevel is on the inside surface here. So when I, when we do that, we'll sharpen, we'll try to sharpen this, that I'll have, need to grind the metal off from the inside. This will come later. Okay, so just so that you know, and this like hook tool, the bevel is on the inside here. So we'll cut, we'll do these uh, in a few minutes. We'll get back to those. All right, so now let's talk about different ways that tools that we use to grind away or sharpen our tools, right? So this first thing here is a great knife sharpener, right, that I have. This does great for sharpening my kitchen knives. It has two sets of stones. This is like the coarse stones. These are the fine stones. These are great for sharpening kitchen knives, but when I feel them, they are actually really smooth. And we really work our tools hard, meaning that these, that our ceramic tools, even when sharp, right, are not really that sharp, really, compared to our kitchen knives. And we grind them down like crazy, meaning that they need way more sharpening and more material removed than these kind of stones can do. So in general, like the sharpening stones that you think sharpening stones that are traditionally used for knives, a lot of times don't work really well, especially if they're pretty good ones like this, don't really work well for doing ceramics because they just don't remove enough material. So let's put this guy away. So, so because our kitchen knives, we'd never let our kitchen knives get as dull as as um, as this. So I use this for my kitchen knives a lot, but we don't use it for ceramic tools. So the next thing would be like you could get a similar sort of thing called diamond stones. And so these come in different hardnesses or different grits, I guess that you would say. So here are my grits. It's 260, 180, and 360. So in general, right, the 180 is coarser. 
260 is, is finer and 360 is the finest. So when we sharpen, I can use these to sharpen my, my, um, my ceramic tools. So I'd always start with the 180. So I'll put these guys aside. And these are just, um, these are just like, uh, I guess you could call them like glorified nail files, I guess. They have basically diamond, little bits of diamond, like somehow really stuck onto this piece of metal. You can get these for really cheap. They're pretty effective and they will wear away a lot of material relatively fast for something that you're hand doing. So this is my tool that needs to be sharpened. So if you go back to the drawing, right, to the drawing, that this tool, right, has the bevel on the outside, bevel on the outside, and has that bevel. So what we want to do is try to match this angle as best we can when we sharpen it, right? So it's hard for you to see, but that angle, whatever angle was originally there, that's what I want to restore. So actually, if you want to see what our angle was originally there, you could see it right here on the part of the tool that never gets used, like right here. So you could see it right there on the part of the tool that we never use. You can kind of see the angle right there. That's the angle I'd love it to be at when I'm done, okay? So I wanna try, I do it this way where I leave this guy here. Let's pull this little pad out from under here. So I love these little shelf liners for holding things in place. So I'll put the shelf liner down, put this little diamond pad down. And then what I'll do is I'll just scrape across this like this and, and try to hold this at the same angle that the, that this bevel needs to be at. So just like as if you're trying to carve in the clay, I'm like trying to trim into this, right? Using this tool and try to hold it at that angle so it, so it gets the angle back. So let's just uh, do something here. So what I'm gonna do here is on this edge, I am going to put magic marker on. So what is the what will the magic marker do? The magic marker will help me see where I'm grinding. So here, I'm gonna put this here. And this is just a trick that a lot of knife sharpeners use, especially when you're learning how to sharpen, which I assume that you are, right? If you're really watching this video. So you can see that I really, uh, put magic marker on that edge. So that whole edge has been magic marker. And so that will tell me when I'm scraping what parts I'm scraping off and what parts I'm leaving behind. So here, I'm just gonna now take this edge and start scraping it. And I'm kind of guessing, I'm hoping I'm guessing that I'm at the right angle when I'm doing this. So sometimes if you have a lot of edge here, you can kind of rock this guy up and down and you can kind of feel it when it hits that bevel. So then I'll just start scraping through like this, start scraping like that. And that's so I'm scraping along this diamond file like that to create that edge. So now let's take a look at it to see what I scraped off, right? So let's take a look at it. And you can see that I scraped off right in here, right? I've scraped off some, man, it's hard to see. So I scraped off pretty good right there. It's hard for you to see. But the most of that marker, oh, there you go, you can see it. So most of the marker right there has been scraped off, but here and over here haven't, but it looks like I got my angle about right. So the reason why I scraped off more here in the middle is because this tool has a slight bow to it. It's not flat. So what I need to do is rock this tool around as I'm scraping it. So here, I'll try to establish that angle again. And then I'm gonna start here at the curve part. Let's do it so we're facing you. So I'm facing you. So I'll start here at the curve like a little bit up on the curve and I'll scrape it and I'm gonna roll it around like that as I go. Then I come to the flat part and then I come around like that, all the way like that. So I'm starting to get most of it. So you will notice that when you do these, if you use these a lot, at least what I found in the ceramic studio that I teach in is that people are using these a lot and really just grinding the snot out of this part. So there'll be a huge dull place here. So, but what I do is I grind these parts, all these parts down to match. So you see how that's starting to look better? And I would just keep going until it felt sharp. So, right, and you'll feel it when it gets sharp, you'll feel it. So I would just keep doing this like this, flip it over, do it like this, and do the other side and keep rolling it and making sure, and I stop and I check it all the time, just check for sharpness. I could already feel that it's getting sharper, right? And don't, and there's some final touches that we'll talk about at the end that you have to do after you do any of these kinds of sharpening. So I'll do that for a while. And then I'll just do a little bit on these because this one will, this coarser stone will establish the edge. We'll get this edge to a pretty fine point 
And then I will switch over and just do a few swipes with each one of these finer stones. So I'll go to the 260 next and I'll do the 360, depending on how it looks. Like this might be overkill for this, but I probably would switch to that. So I keep doing that with all these until it got sharp all the way around. And it's always good just to eyeball check it every time, just to see if you're missing an area or whatever. So I keep doing that. So that's, that's hand, that's one of the hand sharpening ones. If you don't have these, right, you can try using what we call a bastard file, right? And so this is a file that's designed to scrape on metal. So let's take a look at this overall. So you can see that this is a file that is, you've seen these probably files around, lying around. And these are designed for taking metal off. So you can use this for sharpening your lawnmower or axes or all sorts of things. What the files that you don't want to use is a file that looks like this. That's something else. Do not try to use this on your ceramic tools right so you want the one that looks like this super liney like that and it works really good my focus is not really going well and if you want to ask just go to the hardware store and ask for a bastard file these are really cheap right oh i should have talked about cost for these you can get these for cheap or expensive right so you could get a set of these for a hundred dollars or you could try to get them for 10 or 15 dollars right that and i for me i got the cheap set because i don't use them that much to begin with and they're doing just fine right so here for the bastard file let's go back to this there's a couple ways we can use this well one it only pushes so don't scrape it the wrong way. And you'll feel which way it scrapes just by running your finger along it. One side, one direction will feel more, have more resistance. The other way won't be, will flow a little bit easier. So the way that scrapes harder is that's the way you wanna go. So that is this way toward the handle. There's a couple ways I can do to sharpen this. And the same concept, right? I'm just trying to establish the, just trying to establish the bevel again to make it sharp, to remove the material. So here I could just do it like this, just like how I was using the other one, right? I could do it that way. So I lay it down like this and I do this and I just roll it around like that, right? And I just keep trying to knock that edge off to establish the bevel again. So if you have a couple of tools, doing it by hand like this isn't that big a deal, right? If you have hundreds of tools to do or a lot of tools that you want to get through really fast, uh, wait for a few minutes and we'll show you those other ways. So I just keep doing that. Another way I can do it is I could leave, I can hang this tool off the edge like this. So let's do it that way. And I can hang this off the edge of a table or something like this. And I can go down across it like this. Right. And once again, I want to hold it still and scrape it across and I could do the end like that, come across and do the end like that. I could go come across here and do the point. Right. I could do that. Usually I would probably put like a little towel or something here at my edge of my work table. Do that. The other way you could do it is if you have a way to clamp it. That would be another way. So you could clamp the tool down and then you could use both hands, the tool, this tool with both hands and go whoop, 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 whoop and take care of it that way. But I don't have a clamp, so I don't get it to do it that way, right? All right. So those were the, the hand ways to do it. Those are generally slower um, and not so much fun, but there's like a craftsmanship part to it. Let's switch over to some power tools. Let's see what we can do with some power tools. So hopefully some of you guys will have this. It's called a Dremel, ooh, Dremel, right? So once again though, so I've put the little stone bit, one of the stone bits here on my Dremel and this will, I can grind away some of that metal. But remember that I wanna still follow this concept where I'm just walking that back so that I can make my new point there, right? So I'm gonna put my safety glasses on so I don't blind myself with a flying chunk of metal. Put that on and then here, the, uh, I'm gonna start grinding. Now the deal is that when I grind, this can generate a lot of heat. So the heat, if this get, metal gets hot enough, the heat will, the metal will lose its temper. What is that? I mean, it's not gonna get mad at you. What it is, is the temper is just the hardening of the steel that they use. And so if it's been heat treated at all, what does that mean? You know how in all the, like when they make knives and all that, they, the blacksmith pounds, 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 and then they stick it in that oil and all this flame goes up and that's called tempering because they cool it down at a very specific rate over a certain amount of time. They make it red hot, 
and they cool it down at a certain speed and that helps the metal become harder, right? The problem is if when I'm using these power tools, I'm grinding away, the metal gets hot, it will lose its temper and become soft metal, right? So when I'm done, I'll have a sharp tool, but because the metal has gotten softer because of my heating it up using my tool, I will, the clay, the, the tool will, um, will lose its edge very quickly. So we wanna be careful when we're doing this that we're not losing the temper. So when I'm doing this here also, I'm gonna make sure that I'm holding this tool at what I feel is the right angle. Let's see if we can get that on camera. You see that? So I'm gonna grind this. So I'm just simulating that angle right now. Just gonna grind along the edge. Here we go. So I turn the tool on, I'm gonna grind along the edge. So for me, I don't stay in one spot very long, meaning I will grind this, my ceramic tool, keep moving this around so that, so that I don't heat up one area of the tool more than the other, right? Because that's a danger. If I feel this starting to get hot, if I think the metal's getting hot, I will dunk it in the water really quick, right? To make sure it stays cool and then bring it out and do it again. So this is pretty effective, this using uh, the Dremel tool to sharpen your, your uh, trimming tools is pretty good. There we go, so let's see how sharp it is. I'm gonna feel it, ooh, that's getting pretty sharp, right? It's way sharper than what it was before already, right? Now, I'm very gingerly sharpening it. I mean, I'm not going after it because I am worried about the tempering of the metal, right? So, but this is the way I would sharpen these. Now, if you have one of the bevels, one of the tools that has a bevel in the inside, this is really the only way that, a really good way, because this one, right, is flat on the outside and has the bevel on the inside, beveling it or sharpening it this way is the only way that I think is really good other than doing it by hand. So I'll just go around here and sharpen, 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 right, like that until I felt that it was sharp enough. Okay, so that's it for that. So that's what I would, that's the way how I use the Dremel tool to make this sharper. All right, so we did that, we did that. So the other thing that you could use is a, 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 bench grinder, but a bench grinder is really aggressive. And the tendency is for you to sharpen the tool. It gets really sharp really fast, but man, it really heats up the metal, right? And then what, what you'll have is a very weak metal, a very soft metal left behind. So you gotta really take it easy with the bench grinder. And it's really, like I said though, it happens really fast with the bench grinder, but I don't use a bench grinder for this because it's just too, I'm too aggressive with it. All right, so the last technique is using a, uh, a diamond disc, which is attached to the wheel. But let me put some of this stuff away and then jump to it. Here we go. All right, so I already have my diamond disc here. So these are diamond discs. Uh, I got these from a company called Diamond Core. They make the great carving tool that everyone's like so excited about. Woo! But these are these are diamond core discs. So they're actually a lot like these, right? Except they can mount to my wheel. And so they come in discs. So you don't know anything about these diamond core discs. They uh, just come with this metal plate that has those diamonds already on it. And then you stick it onto a bat. And then the benefit of this is, is that I can have it on the wheel, right? And it can spin once I turn my wheel on. Right now, this is just like one of these things, except it's moving, right? So the other thing is, remember I was worried about heat and creating too much heat? This, we could solve that by putting some water on, right? So these diamond core discs are, are kind of expensive, but man, they are so worth it because there's all sorts of uses for these because you can grind the bottom of your pots and all that. So this now, I can hold this still and then turn it around. So I want to hold it, remember, at the angle that I want to create the bevel at, like we talked about. Oop, I'm going to put my eyeballs on so I don't lose an eye. So here we go. So 
I'm just going to hold it here at the right angle and trim. So I can also, it's easy for me to roll this around and do these edges all the way around, going around, right? So I can sharpen even these curved sides really fast, really effective. So it does happen kind of fast. So take it easy and check often if you're going to use one of these discs. So here I just start with it down. I just start going up and around. Sorry for the noise. Sorry for the noise. Coming around. Right like that. And the good thing it is I can sweep this around and keep a pretty consistent angle all the way through. So let's look at that edge. So that edge should be already. Ooh, look at that. So that edge is looking better. Let's do it one more time. like that so it's already probably getting much much sharper and look at how clean and beautiful that edge is it going to be as good as the factory edge probably not but it's going to be close right it's still not that sharp but i'll keep doing this and then i'd flip it around and do both sides the other thing you could do is um just showing you some examples here of me how much i sharpened so i love these dolan tools this is the 110 right so this is the way the 110 looks kind of when it's new it's not brand new but it's new ish it's like my newest version of this so this is the dolan tool after you've sharpened it after a couple of years you see how much smaller that's gotten this tool or is these tools started off the same but i've been keep sharpening these edges so how would i do this i'm gonna put more water down Right, and I'm just gonna sharpen this edge and see this is, has a really pronounced edge. You can really see that edge. So I've already sharpened that a little bit, but I'm gonna sharpen it more. And so I wanna lay this sucker down at so that that little bevel, right, is flat against the wheel. So I wanna mark that down like there. I can feel it when that bevel hits flat against the wheel and then we'll go and sharpen. And so since this is a flat tool, a flat blade, I don't have to do all this fancy rolling around, right? So let's take a quick look at that. So you can see right there, let's see if it comes into focus. You can see that it's taken away that part right there, but you see that end is still a little bit rusty. So why is that? Well, that's because that's the end I use more. So I've worn off more metal off that end so when I sharpen, I need to actually wear this down. If I want to set it back to that factory new tool angle, sorry, it's having a hard time focusing. I need to wear all this metal down till I get to that end because I use that corner the most when I'm trimming. So here we go. Kind of rock it back till I feel it, till I feel that bevel hit flat, which is right there. And then here we go again. Let's see how it looks. So I'm almost there, so I got a little bit closer. We'll go a little bit more. There we go. So I got it. So now you can see I made it all the way to that end. You can see the whole edge is shiny. I have this edge still to do. Let's just do the whole thing really fast, right? So I have water down on this disc, right? So I don't have to worry about dust or anything. The deal is though, I am creating metal bits, right? So you notice that I cleaned my wheel off before I started all this stuff. If any of this metal, I'm worried about little flecks of this metal getting into my clay. I'm worried that I'll leave iron flecks or black spots in my clay. So I clean up before I start and then I clean it up right after I'm done. All this water, all this stuff gets washed away. I don't want any of this stuff getting in my reclaim. So let's take a look at that. So that side's looking really good. And I'm going to do this front side right here. So I got to search for that bevel, get that bevel right. So I know that that bevel is flat against there. There, woo, that's looking pretty good. Let me do a little bit more. So there, so this disc, I just know from experience, look at, look at that. So I'm there basically all the way around. Look at that beautiful sharp edge so this disc leaves a little bit of um coarseness to it so i need to switch to a finer the finer finer disc so i have that that was the 140 i think what was it two 120 so if i just leave it like this when i trim it get, i get little lines when i'm trimming so i'll switch down to the 240 so i know that diamond core sells 
the the one ten the one twenty the two forty and then they also sell a sixty disc but man that sixty disc is really aggressive for for this sort of work so this will help clean up some of those lines oh I forgot to put water on there all right and you can I can feel that this is already much smoother so I did a little bit there I'll do a little bit on this front face and I'll do a little bit right here. Now you never would want to sharpen your kitchen knives on here. This is way too aggressive for that, right? So whoosh, look at that. So let me look at it really close here. So you could see that there, it is looking really sharp, right? So then if I really wanted to, I can come back and go, cause this is the 240. So I wouldn't want to use the 260 or the 180. I've gone past that. So I, if I really want to put a, just a finer edge on this, I could just take this guy and just do a few sweeps on here. And that will make this guy beautiful and happy, right? Now, I said there was one other step you always got to do, right? So, ooh, sorry. So the last thing, let's talk about what is the last step, right? So let's bring this back because we need to do another, we need to do some more drawing for you for the last little, just to explain why we even need a last little step. So when we're sharpening, I lost all my, my markers and stuff. So when we're when we're sharpening here, right? We're grinding away metal. So we're grinding away, grinding away. So metal can form a burr, right? So what is a burr? So when we're sharpening, a little hunk of metal will just kind of hang on on the back side, right there, right? So there'll be a little hunk of metal that forms. So even when you feel it, it feels sharp. I've been grinding, grinding, grinding. A little burr, a little hunk of metal will hang off the back. If we don't knock that burr off, it will fold down and make our tip like instantly blunt. So, or there might be a little bit of clay kind of hanging off, like a little bit of clay hanging on there, a little nah, uh, metal hanging on there. So we didn't knock that off. So let me go back to my tool here. So this is my tool. And sometimes you can feel the burr on the back side. When I rub this, I can feel that little hunk of clay, um, hunk of metal hanging off the back right there. So I need to knock that piece of metal off, right? And I could do it a lot of different ways, but I could just take this little guy and just run it back and forth like that. I could take this bastard file and run it back and forth like that, right? I could do that any number of ways, but I have a little one here somewhere that I lost now, right? So I have this little guy, which would be perfect for this. And I can just run this file on the back side of this. Right, so if you were sharpening these guys here, right, you'll feel the burr on the inside surface there on both sides. You could, you need to run this. This is like the final touch, right? You need to run this back and forth in the inside of that. So that's why I like this tool because it has a rounded edge, right? So this is the same thing. This is pretty much a bastard file, except it's like mini, mini me, right? And it's slightly round, has a rounded side and a thing. If you're desperate, Right, you don't have that. You could probably just take a piece of very of sandpaper, roll it up around a, a dowel or something, or roll it up around something round, right, like this, right? Because lot maybe you don't have these fancy files, right? They're not that fancy, but I could take that little piece. It's probably the finest sandpaper you have, and I could just sand the inside like that to kind of knock off that burr. Because you need to knock it off, or else it'll fold down and make your tool instantly dull. Here, I could just, since this is big and flat, I could probably just take this like this and just rub this back and forth on the inside, and that will knock off that burr really good, right? There we go. And now I have a sharp tool. In general, I will sharpen all my tools at once. I'll dig out every trimming tool I have and sharpen them all at the same time because I clean up my wheel really good and then I have to clean up really good after. So I just spend an hour or two just sharpening everything using either the Dremel or the wheel head thing. And I just trim them all and they're all beautiful and they're all good and, I'm, and I'd be done. All right, great. Thanks a lot, everyone. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed.